When I first met Sumail, I knew this kid was going to be big. He's as confident as he is controversial. Money or the ego? Or the title? title. What am I going to do with the title? I'll take the money. Indispensable as he is infuriating. This goes like, oh, this guy didn't practice. And, you know, I'm just I'm just taking his shit. And I'm like, t still taking it for four months. I have no fucking issue with it. Then he just doesn't stop, you know, like someone keeps poking you at one point, you're going to explode. Tremendous as he is temperamental. Regardless of what you may think of Sumail, his talent is outright indisputable. He's the youngest millionaire in the history of esports and arguably the single greatest Dota player of all time. This is his story. It was in his native country of Pakistan, when he was only eight years old, that Syed Sumail Hassan had his first encounter with Dota. From that point on, he was determined to become the best. His ferocious work ethic was shaped not only by his upbringing, but his family's decision to immigrate to Illinois in 2012. My dad worked really hard to get me and my family here. I live with eight family members in a small apartment and I share my room with three family members. It's really mesmerizing for all of us. And he's been playing so fast, never tired, never get bored. That same year, Sumail began to make a name for himself in the NEL. Within two years, he became the in-house league's highest rated player and started getting offers to stand in for professional teams. This is a lot of time wasted. Now they go to the mid lane. There's your blink dude. You should have kept him in your war. Suck it's dead. <laughs> oh, one oh, more class. He's so low. He's able to the make one. it out. Again. Uh oh, it's not if Sumail says so. Special delivery from the Mr. Sumail. That was player. sick. What a player. <laughs> Long range zip while TPing. That was impressive. One such offer came from Sahil Universe Aurora, offlaner for North America's flagship esports franchise, Evil Geniuses. Given their recent roster troubles, it wasn't long before Universe pushed for Sumail to join himself, Fear, PPD, and the recently signed Aoi 2000 his desire to compete at the highest level, his will to be a professional, that was the most prominent thing that I got from him. So when a spot opened up on Able Geniuses, Sumail was the first person that we thought of. The spot in question was left by Team Secret's drama-ridden acquisition of Ludwig Zai Wahlberg and Artur Artizi Babayev. Everyone thought that we were on the losing end of this Western shuffle. As soon as we lost Artizi and Zai, everyone would be like, Welcome to becoming a tier two team again, EG. Arteezy was not only a role model to Sumail, but one of the only mid laners he thought superseded him in skill. Sumail had big shoes to fill, and it showed. His first LAN, the D2L Finals in Las Vegas, saw EG place third, due in part to the young mid laner's lackluster play. Very low on man, or very low on life. Arrow oh. comes out, he's dead! That's gonna Jimmy. be your first blood. And Omni Jimmy. Slash helping to clean house, but look at Sumail just absolutely melt. Now it's Fear's turn. Killing it down to about half health, Thunder God's Wrath, and oh my goodness. Godlike indeed, and he is a vengeful, wrathful god. An innocent little swap ends in tears for the boys in blue. People started to wonder whether a competitively inexperienced 15 year old merited a spot on such a top tier team. Then, DAC happened. The 2015 Dota 2 Asia Championships, nicknamed Mini TI on account of its $3 million prize pool, was Sumail's chance at redemption. After going 11 and 4 in groups, EG climbed the upper bracket and, after losing to TI4 runner up VG Gaming, managed to sweep their rivals, Team Secret, in the lower bracket finals. S4. Stuck in the middle of everybody, gets a berserker call off. Culling Blade will not proc, however. Puppy going down to the split shot of fear, the double kill. This is a disaster. Secret looks to be out of DAC 2015. EG will find their way in the grand finals. Best of five tomorrow versus Vici Gaming. 
but it was in Game 3 of the Grand Finals against Vici Gaming where Sumail put on what is quite possibly the most fabled performance of his career. But things got off to a rough start. Moving on to Sumail mid, he's gonna get caught out. Looks like Vici Gaming are up to it again. They'll start off with the shackles, now followed up with the double raise, and they've got the third if needed. It's not. And they only got rougher. Okay. Not so sure. Still chasing, but Earthshaker coming into position. Now they're gonna have a fissure. Is it in time? One raise, two raise. They get the kill again. Now they're going to mid again. Looks like the Shaman is third time the char as well. Well, first, second war. Sumail trying to run in, dodge that last raise. It's not gonna happen. FY and Fenrir just wrecking Sumail mid. There's gonna be a little pressure towards the snake, but rotating in though is your Earthshaker. Oh, mid lane, Sumail again. Caught out. He got Blood a kill. Going down. And then, just when Sumail looked to be out, he started to claw his way back in. Oh my, and they don't even get the deny. Super a bit too quick. Now your hook shot in from Ice Ice Ice. Universe looking to turn it. He will end up falling. It's a one for one thus far. FY gonna cancel the shackles. Super has a double damage room though. They have to be careful. Sumail running low on mana. Raze is coming out again. They can't keep on losing this. He clawed. He's gonna find That's another good. kill potentially on FY. He does not have the pull. Oh. Doesn't matter. FY just gonna get blown up. And clawed. Reflection. Do they actually engage onto this? The storm zipping into the cocks, fighting ice, ice, ice. Universe gonna bolt him. Can Sumail finish the job? He drops that remnant. And clawed. And as a result, looking good at the top lane. Now Black's gonna get jumped with Omni Slash and the ball lightning from Sumail. A lot of players would crumble under this, this kind of early this pressure. Guy he's died totally bad. Four times in the lane, and he's six and five at minute nine. Unbelievable. Until game three of the DAC finals turned into the Sumail show. We go for two is the real question. They get the hex off on Universe. Sumail zipping into the cogs, but they have no lockdown. That Zeus ulti coming out. Massive damage. Now the Omni Slash. Black gonna get blown up. It's three dead for Vici. They're in danger here. Super needs to turn it. He tries to go into Universe. Blade Fury working him in the black hole. It's gonna be five. EG again. Out maneuvering Vici Gaming in the clutch. A triple for Sumail. It worked once. Can it work a second time? Super just barely caught by the black hole. They're looking to wipe them all the witch doctor gonna get run down by your storm and they've still got a pull left for super he walks in he wants to at least get racks out of this he'll get nothing pull back wiped at the base a triple for sumail die back after die back beachy gaming and shambles it's a 3-0 eg just won over 1.3 million dollars four days before his 16th birthday sumail had won the third largest tournament in the history of esports people were already starting to consider him the best mid laner in the world. And as far as he was concerned, they were right. It was from this point on that confidence and sheer unadulterated aggression became Sumail's signature traits. Now, with a premier tournament win under his belt, it was time for Sumail's real test, the International. EG entered the tournament as favorites alongside their rivals, a team who'd won four of their last five lands, Team Secret. Secret weren't just good, they were being hailed as quite possibly the greatest lineup of all time. You say all-star team, okay? There are 107 players that have played 100 or more Dota 2 matches. The top four winning percentages in that group of players are all on Team Secret. But it wasn't Secret, whose elimination early on in the lower bracket earned them a humiliating 7th, 8th finish, that stonewalled EG in TI5's upper bracket final. It was the unknown, wildcard qualifying, incomprehensibly dominant CDEC. The ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the winner's bracket final here between CDEC Gaming and Evil Geniuses. Both teams one series away from finding their spot there into the grand final. Look how quickly it melts. There's nothing that EG could do. CDEC's physical damage output is ridiculous. They've got the vision of the BBD here with the track out as well. BBD in trouble! They'll get themselves a fourth kill! Samael, the only last man standing there for EG. Is that it? That's it! 20 minutes in, CDEC, they're, they're into the grand finals, they've done it! After getting 2-0'd by CDEC, EG needed to lick their wounds. They started by conducting a sweep of their own against LGD in the lower bracket finals. There's the global, anyone's gonna fall, Silar is gonna drop next, maybe could potentially join him as Yao does what he can against Sumail, it's not quite enough, now they use him again, where's that stun? They get it, and he's down, 9 finished, he's out! He's out! 
63 seconds with no gyro for 110. AG have done it. They have taken game one here against LGD. They don't have the echo. The Shadow Fiend bought out before the fight. He's going to go on MMY right now. No time to think about it. MMY getting nuked to smithereens. El Sumel and Universe almost killing him off. He frantically retreats. He will survive for now. Universe is going to be fishing for a hook, but he doesn't need the kill. He got the rats, and now he's going to get him anyway. MMY's dead, and EG will move on to the grand final. EG had made it all the way to the grand finals, but victory was anything but certain. CDEC were less experienced and less accomplished than EG, but they had developed a hyper-aggressive playstyle that no team at the tournament had been able to crack. But EG had studied CDEC and planned to be the first team to survive their assault. Here she comes, the team beat the T1 Towers, two heroes down already, this could be it, the money will let EG win this fight. They kind of want it anyway with the amount of damage the fear has Storm, jumping all the way back up again, they find aggressive, Queen of Pain the only one up, it fell at the last hope, and it was, EG will take game one in the TI5 Grand Final from what looked like an unstoppable CDEC. Through ingenious drafting and disciplined play, EG took Game 1. But it was in Game 3 where, after suffering a loss in Game 2, EG hit their stride. They find their opening, it's a lion down, Q also being thrown down by that concussive shot, locked inside the cops in the middle of the river, he needs a path to freedom, it just doesn't exist, it's Samal, he even goes in deeper, on the back of Shiki, the sun will be available, they back him back in, they're still the defensive spirits of Marvel's side of fits, and maybe there is enough damage, aggressive, Siri chained up, they need the damage, four stuff away, aggressive, goes back to left, exit, it's huge trouble, trying to run himself out of the cops, four stuff down the way, and this is real trouble right now for CDEC, Shiki down in the tree line as well, there are no buybacks available, Lion, the sole survivor, they're actually just going straight for the GG push, they want CD to admit defeat, and they get it, EG will go one game up in the TI5 Grand Final. On the back of Sumail's Ember Spirit, EG had taken control of the series. By Game 4, it was too late. Sumail's Storm Spirit had been given free reign. The nail in CDEC's coffin came in the form of one final play. One of the greatest in TI history. The six million dollar Echo Slam. There is no hook shot. They're all together. PPD, here comes the Ice Blast, ready for the dive! In from Universe, it's a disaster! CDEC, they're gonna get wiped from the face of the earth, apart from aggressive, he'll jump out, but the Wombo combo perfectly hits from Evil Geniuses, and now they will take Roshan. Samael is back, they'll get the Aegis of the Immortal. About 10 minutes later, Sumail became the youngest player ever to win a TI. He'd been a professional player for nine months and was already the youngest millionaire in the history of esports and the sixth highest earning player of all time. Sumail hadn't just reached the top, he'd done it faster than anyone thought possible. In the wake of their hard-earned victory at TI, EG made a controversial roster change. We ended up releasing AUI and bringing in our old teammate Arteezy to play with us and um, it's just kind of what we, everyone on our team thought was best for us going into this next year. Ironically, Arteezy's prodigal return to EG resulted in six months of second and third place finishes. The general consensus was that the reason for EG's downfall was twofold. From a compositional perspective, Arteezy's farm intensity had relegated Samael to the role of space maker. From a cosmological one, EG had gone a step too far in kicking Owie, and now, from a karmic standpoint, they had to pay for it. Things got so bad that, come the Manila Major, Arteezy had once again left EG for secret, and this time he'd taken Universe with him. Universe rejoined EG shortly after, but the situation was clear. EG were coming apart at the seams. But Sumail stayed the course, as did PPD, EG's hard-nosed captain and drafter. They had become the pillars of EG, the brains and the brawn respectively. And despite their somewhat tenuous relationship, come TI6, that stability showed. In their upper bracket series against E-Home, 
EG not only became the first team in the history of TI's main stage to come back against Mega Creeps, but prove victorious in what is canonically regarded as one of the greatest games of Dota ever played. EG, what are they looking for? The initiation comes out out of fear. Refresher activated by Old Eleven, not gonna get the chance for a second Primal Roar. He's gonna get blown up inside the Chronosphere. He's down and out. Evil Genius is still five up, but here comes Dead on these slash bouncing around with the Shadow Demon. What would he be able to go on his eye? But an arrow! Oh my god! The male just nailed him, but he still managed to get himself away in the back lights. The Good spaceless word. void going the back. He's down the He's now gonna go for Old Chicken. He may be activated. And now he's gonna run himself away. Universe says these back lights. Ice, 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 EG might be able to do this! Evil Genius is their holding! Samael, already going out of Fenrir! No chaotic offering, and Ice Black to Jagan first! He'll take him out! Eho! Fenrir buys back with the tier 4! The throw's going down! The throw down to half HP! Eho can't defend it! The Genius have done it! Game 1 is over! But EG just didn't have the grit to go all the way. And despite clawing tooth and nail against Digital Chaos, Sumail missed his chance to play for a second TI title. Perfectly for resolution. And we hop straight for the jugular onto the throne, but they stop Rezo. They hold for now. Fierce coming out with the vengeance. Throne, low, not dead. It's gonna be dead. It's gonna be dead. They take game three. Oh my. That defeat was enough to send EG into disarray. Arteezy returned to the team for the third and final time as Fear retired to become the team's coach. More surprising, however, was PPD's decision to leave the roster and become EG's CEO. There was something about PPD's sudden and haphazard departure that didn't quite sit right, but it would be almost a year before the truth came to light. After TI6, the plan was not for me to be the CEO. That was not the initial plan. It just kind of changed into that. You know, we had a talk after TI and it was, hey, what are we gonna do? We were in the middle of this huge divestment where we're all taking ownership in EG. And it was, oh, and all of a sudden, like Sumail didn't want to play with me because I, I'm, I'm a tough, I'm a tough guy. I'm a, I'm a strong personality. And when people aren't, when I feel like people aren't giving it their all, that's, that's when I, you know, that's my biggest pet peeve. That's when I actually get frustrated. At 16, Sumail had arguably become the greatest player in the history of Dota. By 17, he'd become something of a superstar, both in and outside the game. And yet, as far as Sumail was concerned, his greatness wasn't up for debate. In his eyes, he was the best, and always would be. I wouldn't say I'm an arrogant person, but when it comes to the game, I like to be cocky. So, I mean, I talk shit, then I prove myself. I mean, as long as I'm performing, like, I don't care if people hate me. I shouldn't be, like, a nice guy who needs to be loved by everybody. And, yeah, it's, that's pretty much it. When it was announced after TI6 that Crit, a first-time drafter, was being brought in as PPD's replacement, the community was skeptical. Sumail was developing a reputation for being haughty and self-absorbed, and it wasn't clear that he'd be able to stay on top without PPD there to keep him in check. You're probably one of the best, if not the best mid in the world. Who gave you the most trouble in this tournament as the enemy mid? I will try to be humble, but I will say no one. Like, no one. <laughs> not the no one, but no one. Oh, okay. Yeah. EG spent the next season trying to regain the sense of stability they'd lost. Everything was in place to give Crit the start he needed to hit the ground running as the team's new captain. But the Danish drafter never broke out the way he was supposed to. EG put up decent results, including a third, fourth place finish at the Boston Major, but were never truly dominant. By the time they were earning yet another third, fourth place finish at the Kiev Major, the player's patience was starting to wear thin. Heroes are good versus Monkey King as well as um, very active. Ooh, Universe really not feeling, that was a lot of good emotion. That was the most emotion I've ever seen from Universe, I think. <laughs> like he's really not sure about his draft right now. But Sumail never stopped showing flashes of brilliance. And even though they went on to win the Manila Masters and take second place at Epicenter, it was at TI7 that EG's cracks became full-blown holes. Despite going 11 and five in the groups, EG were swept out of the upper bracket's first round by eventual runner-ups, Newbie. Oh my god! If it keeps KP alive! 
beautiful play from Kaka. He managed to save him there. The second of Black Hole for Universe is down. They've lost two. Sonic Wave flies through from S Triple C. Triple kill for Boogie. EG are all dead. And GG is are you kidding me? Having squandered their upper bracket berth, EG were once again swept in the first round of the lower bracket, this time by Team Empire. And despite putting up a truly formidable performance on Puck, Sumail had to stand by and watch as his team's TI hopes came to a disastrous end. EG. It's over for them. EG was so close to stabilizing so many times, fought their hearts out in the last match, but it wasn't enough. Falling 0-2, devastation for evil geniuses. The team's efforts to rebuild a dominant roster around Sumail had failed, and it was clear that something needed to change. What wasn't clear was whether the problem was Sumail or his teammates. Shortly after EG's catastrophic showing at TI7, Zai left the team and Fear rejoined EG in an attempt to restore some much-needed leadership. Sumail's record had never been spotless, but from then on, the Sumail-centric nature of EG became a scapegoat on which to blame not only the loss of PPD, but the downfall of EG as a whole. And after three months of abysmal results, EG did the unthinkable. Universe, who'd been on EG for nearly five years, and who was reputed for being one of the most stable offlaners in the history of competitive Dota, had been kicked. So you guys are, it's not like any hard feelings or anything, you guys are still, you know, cool, it's just mutual kind of like changing of the team, or? I, I think you're cool. I was, uh, uh, I talked to Universe, like, not very briefly, but yeah, I, I didn't, like, uh, see anything bad from him. I think, I, I mean, Universe, like, you know, he's a very cool, calm-headed guy, so he won't, like, take, he, he won't hold grudges, in my opinion. Like, that's how I see it. Crit moved to position 4 as Misery was recruited to be the team's new captain. And to everyone's shock, Fear became EG's new mid laner. Sumail, in an effort to regain some sense of positional dominance, had switched to the off lane. If EG's decision to kick PPD had become retroactively recognized as the beginning of the end for Sumail, then his decision to leave the mid lane altogether was the end in itself. Once PPD chimed in, he and Sumail both became rotating targets in a community-wide witch hunt. Then he comes out and do, do this interview while I'm not saying anything, and he just goes like, oh, this guy didn't practice, and you know, I'm just, I'm just taking his shit. And I'm like, t still taking it for four months, I have no fucking issue with it. Then he just doesn't stop, you know, like someone keeps poking you at one point, you're gonna explode. If I, if I were that bad of a player, if I were like, I had no like, respect for the game, I don't think every other player on the team who had played with him like for more like than they had played for me like for more time they would have decided to play around them you know but it didn't work out that way so i guess sometimes you just gotta accept the fact that you're wrong and just fucking move on by the start of 2018 eg's performance had truly plummeted sumail's offlane stint wasn't paying off having instead subjected him to a barrage of criticism and worse yet ridicule Finally, midway through EG's middling performance at ESL Genting, Sumail snapped. Sumail had reached his breaking point. From here on out, he became likened to something of a plummeting pop star, a prodigy whose prolonged infantility stemmed from his having achieved greatness too quickly for his own good. After finishing 10th 12th at ESL Birmingham, EG kicked misery and fear. It wasn't until EG announced that they'd poach reputed captain and offlaner Fly and S4 from OG that people had reason to think that Sumail might once again reach the top. The king of the mid lane was back. Sumail, what's your motivation? Uh, what money. Happened? Money? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Everyone else is going to tell you uh, they're playing because they're super passionate. Yeah. They love the game. Yeah. No. I, I mean, that's the good thing, right? Like, I'm the best at it. But I can also make money out of it, so it's just a bonus. If you had to pick one. Money the or the ego? Or the title? The title. Two times. What am I going to do with the title? I'll take the money. <laughs> <laughs> Even after EG qualified for TI-8 and took first place at the Summit 8, people were skeptical that this new OG-inflected EG would be able to perform. 
After finishing the groups with an affirming 13-3 record, EG swept Secret in the first round of the upper bracket. It wasn't until they met OG, who were seeking revenge for the unforgivable blow that was S4 and Fly's departure, that EG met their match. DRX jumps in, looks for the Fisher, gets side. Oh, deep with the black hole! Oh. Oh. The, the, the Reaper side cancels the black hole, but the combo from Thompson straight on top of RTZ takes him out! RTZ dead for 80 seconds! S4, Crit and Fly getting pushed back to the base! You can see how confident they are, they know they can clean this out. This is the last fight for EG, they jump forward. Rolls in, but immediately the Ghost GRX in again with the control, the Fisher out between the two of them. They find the. Uh, uh, they're gonna find S4, they're gonna find Fly as well. GG is cold! After trading evenly in games 1 and 2, EG entered an extraordinarily anticipated game 3 with their upper bracket lives at stake. Sumail needed to put on the performance of a lifetime. So he did. Pretty slow. Yep. And that's it. Oh, it's in. It's in. It's in. It's in. The poor Warriors don't call it. The ball's caught out for Jarek. S4 crit. They're getting low. They've lost 2 EG S4. Try to run, but he can't escape. The player has to come out straight away here for crit. Sumail. RTZ is still alive for now, Anna getting tossed up, tossed back, Sumail, he's going to stand up the set, back him with a new zone, Sumail managed to pick up an ultra kill before he went down. Unfortunately, his 31-4 and stat line wasn't enough. Against every odd, OG won their series against EG and, eventually, the international altogether. Given the unprecedented and historic nature of OG's run, much of what made EG's own run so impressive ended up being overshadowed. EG went on to beat Virtus Pro, the highest ranked Dota team on the planet, as well as Team Liquid, the second highest and winners of TI7. You and I talked in our interview earlier this week about what it would mean to you to win TI for the second time. You are now that much closer to it. How, how does it feel now? Uh, before this TI, I was just, uh, I was trying to play to showcase as a best player, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I'm just like, uh, I'm just trying to have, I'm trying to have fun. I've, I want to have the best team. It doesn't matter who's the, who the best player is anymore. That's how I see it. It's a team game. And I think we have a really good chance to win because the team is really looking good. LGD smell blood. They're going in, maybe pressing forward. EG, last heroes left alive. It's a blade melt from Arteezy trying to stem the bleeding, but it's not happening. Another in the grave. EG all out of focus, in trouble, and inside their base. This is looking like it's going to be it as Sumail, last one alive for the team, dead again. And GG, LGD are moving on to the grand finals. Going into TI8, EG were ranked 11th and were 11,000 points out of first. In what was arguably the most competitive TI of all time, they finished third. And boy, did they earn it. Sumail finished the International 8, having averaged the second most fantasy points of any player, with no one else from EG even making it into the top 25. He declared his return to the mid lane to be the return of its king. And despite the fact that in doing so, he'd invoked a community-wide eye-roll, his performance at TI-8 had been nothing short of regal. Sumail once again emerged from an international as quite possibly the best mid laner in the world. Even though he missed yet another chance to play for a second TI, something that hadn't been true for a long time was made resoundingly clear. Whatever the cause of EG's shortcomings was, whatever had kept them from going all the way at TI, it most definitely wasn't Sumail. Ultimately, whether you love or hate Sumail, it isn't because he thinks he's the best, it isn't even because of his arrogance, his irreverence, or the drama he incites. It's because, in spite of all those things, he's probably right. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.